Well, hello and good evening and welcome to the Majority Podcast. My name is Mark Devlin. I'm the host and this is Scotland's number one anti-nationalist show. Um, branded, apparently by the National, as an ultra art union's group. So if that's not your thing, <laughs> please look away. What we do is we represent the majority of Scots who are against toxic uh, nationalism. Toxic, divisive, and greedy nationalism, in fact. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we are going out tonight live on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, I'm, and here's my co-host, uh, David Griffiths and Niall Fraser. Hello, Hello everyone. Goody. What are we going to be talking about tonight? David, you're up. Tonight, I will be talking about Nicola's referendum legal trouble. Uh, and I'll be talking about uh, Sturgeon's great Jubilee Jolly. Oh, mm. yes, that was, of yeah, course. was quite something that was. And I'll be asking, isn't it time that Douglas Ross gave up? Mm. Um, and wait, what wait. else we got? Talking of which, we have Zoomer of the Week. That's right. So we will be back in just a second. Right, first a uh, special announcement. Next week, we will not be on on Thursday. We are going to be on on Wednesday. At the same time, 7 p.m., we have a prior engagement. All of us have to go somewhere. Um, so uh, we're changing to a Wednesday. And there's a possibility that we may change to permanently to a Wednesday after that. So if you come in on Thursday, you may miss us. But always remember that we are available on Catch Up, as it were. Uh, you, you can go and see us on YouTube, the recorded version of the show on YouTube. And mm -hmm. um, where else? What would I do? Um, as usual, also thanking the donors. Uh, you made this possible uh, with the, providing us with your donations uh, um, to get the podcast started and also to get uh, to keep it going. So if you feel like what we do, please do donate to us. Um, and also, like to thank our friends, UK Union Voice and United Against Separation, who all support the podcast by helping us broadcast it directly from their Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. And of course, don't forget, you can also watch on Twitter and via YouTube, from where you can subscribe to the majority. Yes, and please like, share, comment, tell your friends, extend the reach at a click of a button. If you've no smashed the like button by now, just get it done. Uh, great comments get read the show. Keep them short uh, so and succinct and we'll get them read out. We'll try to get as many comments read as we humanly can. And as always, thank you to everyone who does make comments. Last week we had hundreds of comments. It was really great. We do read them all. Can't put them all on the screen, um, but we try our best. So, And hello to everyone who's already said hello so far. Coming up, um, we're going to uh, talk... David will be talking about... Um, the referendum law issue. Yep. I will Indeed. be talking about Douglas Ross, and Niall will talk about uh, the Jubilee Jolly. Yes. Just in a second. Okay, so uh, last week uh, was the, uh, I don't know if everyone noticed, uh, but it was a huge Jubilee celebrations. So, uh, and for once, we got to see a very, very Happy Sturgeon. A very happy Sturgeon in the Royal Box at the Queen's 70th Jubilee celebrations. And I must say, it has got to be the happiest I've ever seen Sturgeon and her husband, Peter. Uh, it really has. Uh, I mean, they seem to have had amazing time down in London celebrating the Queen's Jubilee. Um, so if you'd be so kind to bring up the Express article, Mark, if you've got it. Oh yeah, just hold on um, a second there. Okay, got, I've got another one here. Is, is that absolutely shameless one, this one here? Absolutely shameless. Uh, yes, yes, this is the one. So there's a lot of great comments in this, uh, this article. So, I mean, it seems to be getting derision from both sides. I mean, the, why did Nicola Sturgeon accept invitations to the Queen's Jubilee, but then deny school mm. children in Scotland the book celebrating her 70 years on the throne? 
I thought that was probably the best comment in the whole article, uh, and it's true. Why? It's, that's it's a really important it? question. Really important. I mean, it's a, a, a bit much. She, she denies the kids the chance of a, you know, not a once in a life. Well, I suppose it, it might be for many of them once in a lifetime, because how many, you know, the Queen's reign will be limited, no doubt. Um, but, I, I mean, I can still remember the Queen uh, coming to my town in 1977, was that Silver Jubilee? And, you know, these yeah, things right. are important for co cohesion. I, I, Glasgow didn't have anything at all going on in the... Uh, in public, for example, and I think that's really not very good at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm great. seeing a lot of great comments coming in. I'm keeping one eye on the comments, one eye on what we're our show. So uh, there was, I mean, let's. Uh, can you bring up a tweet from the National Mark? If you, um, oh, it was an one? image of. It's called the Royal Flush. Um, Royal Flush. Royal Royal Flush. Um, find that. Oh, well, oh, yeah. I see it here. Okay. Give while me a you find it, so. Bear in mind, the National Sturgeon's Media, uh, and clearly oh, this yes. is uh, anti-monarchy. Um, so interesting that Sturgeon and the National are sort of deviating on this, um, as clearly, very clearly, uh, Sturgeon enjoyed herself in London in the Royal Box, enjoying all the trappings yeah. of Great Britain, whilst seemingly plotting to break up Great Britain. So something doesn't really make sense. So tell us in the comments, guys, was... Wasn't that the happiest you've ever seen Sturgeon? Ask yourself. I mean, it's got to be. Well, uh, I mean, this image I've as been... well. Go yeah. ahead, David. Go on, go on. I was just going to say, the only time I've ever seen Sturgeon looking remotely as happy was when Derek Mackay was talking to her on the floor of Hollywood, and the two of them were smiling carefree. They were like a couple of students just sitting in the common room. And I just have to wonder what on earth Derek was saying to her. So then I told him he was really cute. Oh, did you? Oh, you're some man, Derek. You know, that's the only time I've ever seen Sturgeon looking as carefree and as uh, full of the joys of spring as she did last weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that national cover was really quite shocking, actually. Yeah. yeah. But not for the perhaps the reason. Um, it's just in bad taste, I think, perhaps, is what yeah. mainly. Um, but... The the thing that struck strikes me, of course, is we have an, a campaign against a national newspaper, and uh, we've raised five thousand five hundred signatures against their continuing to profit from anti English hate. And the thing that's interesting about it is that the the CEO, the president, I suppose, of the company, a guy called uh, Henry Far Walker, he got an MBE a couple of years ago. Right, this guy got an MBE, right, from. Yep. From the country, and yet he's profiting from publishing this newspaper that says flushing the royal family down the toilet. Now, there's a time and place, I oh. might say, for that type of thing, and uh, it's that's you know I think just very poor taste. Yeah, oh, poor taste is an understatement, Mark. Uh, it's Indeed. unbelievably poor, especially having received an MBE. I know. It's Come really on. Terrible. It's, it's really uh, hypocritical. I mean, that's the yeah. problem with a lot of these people. And the same thing with Sturgeon, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's just completely hypocritical. She she, she, she goes down there. She's a, a festooned with uh, <laughs> you know, Union Jacks, flags, whatever you want to call them. She's taken all yep. the benefits of the Union. And, it, and, and nationalists, of course, do that. They take all the benefits of the UK, I should say, because we don't like to call mm -hmm. it the Union. But they take all the benefits, that's all right. the money, everything. And then they turn around, and next day, next day she turns around and says, "We want to be, you know, away from all this." You know, like, well, you know, make your mind up. At least Sinn Fein and all that, they don't even go to the UK yeah. Parliament. They don't take their seats. They don't. They don't participate. If you're going to at least, you know, you say you're not going to be part of it, then don't participate in the good bits. They're so, I don't know, so greedy. Right, right. Just to yeah. get them again, more greed. Yeah, right, rant, ranting again. Uh, out, <laughs> I mean, to me, uh, it is. I'm very happy to see Sturgeon in her element. You know, all happy. It's just interesting that the element is yeah. the Queen's Jubilee. You know, it's, it's, it is. It's just a, how could you campaign to break up uh, the country and yet go and, and celebrate with the very people that you're trying to depart away from? It's... Yeah. Oh, it's hypocrisy well, doesn't it, cover it. Well, here's the yeah. meme, meme that we made for it there. You know, in London, <laughs> all happy. And in Scotland, it's like she can't even answer 
uh, the question, when anyone asks her a question, she's full of disdain, contempt, anger, that anyone will ask her any question, or she just appears to be angry at the job the whole time. And these are things that she should be doing. You know, it's, there's, no need, there's no need for this kind of anger and venom all the time. It's like so if someone in, right, the, right. In, in the parliament asks her a question, you know, give at least a reasonable answer. You, you never see that in the, in the House of Parliament. They would be called out for it straight away. It's really, uh, right. it's really not right at all, and I think it's. it's just, I think the feeling of that she's just too good for all of us here, yeah. and too good for her own party, yeah. too good for everyone in Scotland who's against her. It's just, you know, just too good. So mm-hmm. if you, she don't like it, she should just, you know, if she likes it better somewhere else, maybe she should go somewhere else. I don't know. They complain about the the um, nationalists saying go somewhere else, but. You know, she seems happier in other places. She's happier in the in the US and happier in London. So, you know, yeah. take that job. Well, that, exactly. Well, if we're keeping you, Nicola, if we're keeping you from your your chosen career path, or your true vocation, please don't let us keep you any further. Just go and follow your dream, please. I'll take you to the airport. I promise. I'll look after the you need, honestly, I'll look after Peter. Don't worry. You need to worry. I'll be fine. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure Peter will be fine. Yeah, a couple of interesting comments coming about uh, referencing the Greens uh, walking out when the Queen was yeah. even mentioned. Uh, I mean, these are part of our uh, government ministers here. Uh, so really, th- there's some deep, deep divisions here, uh, even with within the, the administration. Uh, it's, it's just outrageous. Yeah, it's been really good for memes, though. I think there's some really oh, great it's... memes that have been come up. I've got a couple here. This is uh, our with uh, waving the waving the flag there she is and this is the classic of course here yeah. just back from the most fantastic holiday ever <laughs> yeah. that was there in the in their <laughs> union uh, jack flag uh, luggage i mean these are this is the thing and i think this is rudely criticized from both, uh, um, both sides yeah. our side and her side uh, really it's just yeah you know it's not really acceptable at all mm. no right are you okay very you got show. Uh, yes, so. I am uh, done with this segment. I'm just looking for some good comments. Uh, right. A lot of well, of course, we have. We do have a lot of. You know, please welcome to um, comment. She's a bloody disgrace, and you and your party should be banished. Well, you know. Some of us think right. that, definitely. Yeah. Um, if you think that, or you think something else, please do put it into the comments. We have more coming up in just a second. Right, David, I think you're going to be doing this next section. I'll cover this next session, yes. Ah, now, the question to be asked, is the net closing in on Ms Sturgeon? Because this week, the first snippets of the Scottish government's very carefully hidden legal advice came out. And I'm talking here, of course, about the fact that the SNP stroke green Scottish government this week finally published some limited extracts of the legal advice it received in relation to the calling of a second referendum. Now, if you remember, guys, the SNP ministers made this decision despite strongly disagreeing, as they, they their quote, strongly disagreeing with the judgment of Scotland's information commissioner that the legal advice they'd received should be made public. Now, let's not forget, this was first raised as a freedom of information request by the Scotsman newspaper, and it was refused by the Scottish government. But the, uh, the uh, Scotsman pursued it, fairly to them, credit to them for doing that, and the Information Commissioner decided it should be published. However, the excerpts published, and they were very limited, they did not in any way comment on the key question, which is whether Holyrood has what is called the competence, competency, which doesn't mean are they competent, it means are they actually allowed, are they able to stage mm-hmm. a referendum without first obtaining UK government approval. Now, they made some strange excuse about, oh no, it's, it's very it's very common for both the UK Parliament and the Scottish Parliament not to disclose the legal advice that's been given. But the Scottish Information Commissioner um, felt nonetheless that the release of uh, this information was in fact right and proper. And he gave the Scottish Government a deadline of June the 10th, which is of course tomorrow. So come yesterday, when it looked like they weren't going to make it by the deadline, an edited, very heavily edited version of the information was published. Now, the, the key thing in the section of the advice which were released only 
covered the question of whether the Scottish Government could ask the Electoral Commission to look at the question in a referendum. That was it. So it's a tiny, yeah. tiny fraction. This is the section um, um, relating to the, the actual question itself that's being asked. I, I just wanted to give you this um, couple of quotes from Agnes Robertson before you guys come in here. But on release of the information, Agnes um, solemnly stated, the Scottish Government disagrees strongly with the Commissioner's reasoning in his decision and considers that there are good grounds for a successful appeal to the Court of Session to challenge the Commissioner's ruling. But he then went on to make some completely incomprehensible excuse for actually not stating the appeal, which I couldn't, I, I've read it and reread it, I still can't see what he's getting at. But uh, he summarised by saying, um, well, much of the information relates to decisions made in 2020, and that uh, talks about decisions which we feel are, are going to be made. What? That really lost me completely. Anyway, summarised. Yeah, it's 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 the, the national, the na national jumped on it. Here's the other thing here. Yeah. Scotland's yeah, yeah, government yeah. Go can prepare for India. They've got this thing here. Okay, so they can prepare, right? Oh, if yes. FM says Indira will happen yep. next year, whether Johnson's PM or not, we'll show that in a minute. Yep. But mm -hmm. it's this thing, this idea. Okay, they can prepare for it, but they they can't do anything. The legal advice, right. so far at least, snippets also say that it's dependent on um, the, the being approved by the UK government. I mean, if this is all they've got the release so far exactly. and it's already so negative on their case, God knows what the rest is going, is going to be like if the rest actually comes out. Yeah. Willie Rennie today was in the Scottish Parliament Absolutely. complaining that the rest, where is the rest? Now, will we see the rest quite. tomorrow? And um, Tomorrow, it's going to be quite a big day if more comes out. Um, well, but they, they're... It's kind of bizarre because they're like, "Oh, this is great." The nationalists are like, "This is great. We've got a plan." And you're like, "There's no, mm -hmm. there's nothing there." Yeah, there is nothing there. It's yeah, a huge, the, big nothing burger. Uh, nothing burger is right. You, you, you saw Agnes McNeil yesterday saying, "Oh, yes, this is a very positive development." Utter nonsense. Positive development. If they, if this really was in any way a, a, a victory for them, they would have been blaring yeah. us, trumpeting us for months. But instead, no, no, no actually said, the, the key Robertson said was, the Scottish Government has concluded particular circumstances only, the time and expense required for an appeal would not be merited, so it will release and publish the information concerns. So in other words, he's saying, of course, we, we don't agree with this, and we would have won an appeal, but we thought we'd just release it anyway. Yeah, okay yeah, then, that's not, fine. It's so they released a oh, fraction it's... of the information deals with only minor it's... relevant details. Well, I don't buy that for a second. What about you guys? Not at all. Not one bit. I mean, I read it like yourself, David, uh, twice. Yep. Uh, it didn't. To me, it it wasn't a positive or negative. It was just. It was. It's immaterial. It doesn't matter uh, what this document said. There was yep. nothing of any substance in it. So it oh, is no. a, a gigantic nothing burger, uh, and they're 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 trying to make it seem like it's huge when if you read the document it's it's hard to see any positives in it whatsoever well we've seen Absolutely. we know that basically they've got it seems more and more that the strategy is to run a pretendy ref and that is not a real referendum is a glorified opinion poll and we talked about this before there was a i ran an article i wrote an article about this in the majority website where um that guy mike russell had been saying to one of the followers the idea was they're going to run the pretendy ref and then use that result whether it's boycotted or not to mm -hmm. say to try and get international agencies to back their um, request for yes, just... uh, for a referendum so the idea is that let's say all the unionists you know, that term all, all the pro uk K people mm -hmm. say um all right we're going to boycott it and then they get a big result 80 percent and then they start yeah. touting that around and we know that we all know here that that's rubbish, but they can somehow get the gullible and the usual suspects to follow that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just unbridled yeah. madness. The... Unbridled madness. I, I mean, it, like, even I thinking think... about this uh, sort of um, uh, this pretend ref that they're then going to use as an excuse. It's just it's it's so harebrained, so bonkers, so. Well, we, we, ran a, we actually ran a, a poll on the majority Twitter. Here it is. Uh, would you boycott, will you boycott pre pretend ref? And our followers uh, said 95% that they would. I wonder what these 4.7% is. Uh, anyway, we already, because we already won the real referendum, pretend ref is yep. toast. Mm -hmm. um, I've got this clip here that I show of Nicola Sturgeon talking about it to the National. So let's have a look at that. 
Oh. To ask you, you know, you said last night's confidence vote showed the democratic <laughs> deficit in Scotland um, um, with only two Scottish MPs sh uh, having confidence in Boris Johnson. Many people are saying the time for independence is now with a Tory party in total disarray. So can you give us any update on progress within DRF2 and when that might happen? Uh, I have a mandate to have... Uh, no, you don't. ...give people the choice within the first term of this parliament. I intend to honour that don't. mandate and I'll set out more details of that. No later. mandate. OK. So but you revealed um, you know, 20 million is being set aside for a referendum um, recently. Can, can you provide assurances to independent supporters that that's not a pie-in-the-sky figure and you do have a you know, plan? Pie-in-the-sky. Well, people will know by reference to the 2014 referendum <laughs> and the cost of that where the £20 million figure comes from, man take uh, the reassurance you're seeking from that. Okay. Um, would, you, would, it, would having Boris Johnson out of office help you secure Section 30 order, do you think? Um, look, people in Scotland will have their ability to uh, make their views known in independence, uh, whether Boris Johnson is Prime Minister mm -hmm. or not. That is democracy. So see that part there. People have the ability to make yes. their views known yes. on independence. Not people will have a choice. Sounds like legalese to me, Mark. It's going to be independent or not. That's mm. not what she said. People will make their views known. That means they're going for a pretend ref strategy. And as we said, we're yep. going to boycott that. The only danger, I think, in this pretend ref is that the Scottish Tories in particular actually say, well, we're up for it, you know, and, and, and oh, capitulate God. to it, oh, uh, which is quite possible, given, yeah. their, given their track record, it's quite possible. So mm -hmm. um, we have to get, I think there is, we have to get firm commitments from the major parties, uh, pro-UK parties, that if they do or to try this pretend ref thing, that it is, uh, they're going to boycott it as well, mm -hmm. and um, particularly yeah. from the Scottish Tories. Just uh, referencing that video as well, what really, what absolute crazy right. attitude it was to have, um, considering it was a national reporter, you know. Uh, I, I, yeah. I don't see many videos done by the national, you know, no no many reporters on the ground type stuff. So to to see eventually see one of these videos, in uh, interviewing Sturgeon and her reactions yeah. just it says it all. She doesn't want to talk to anyone. No, and she Absolutely. continues with this thing about the mandate. You can't have a mandate for something that's out with your control, right? They, they might as well have a mandate for going into Ukraine and, and try yeah. to fight Putin. I mean, yeah. really, that's the kind of... They don't have a mandate for the reserved issues. They don't have a mandate for defence. They don't have a mandate for constitutional issues. That's that's just it. You don't. Right, right. So they go, oh, we've got a mandate. Oh, this is great. You're like, no, no, no mandate. Leave us alone. What, what, you know, what and, but they still go, they have a mandate. Listen. They, they, you're right. What they do, just for anyone listening, they, the SNP keep saying we have a mandate because it was in the 2020 or 2005 general election manifesto uh, that they would do various things. One of which was the, the, the platform on which they stood in the 2019 general election was vote SNP, we will stop Brexit and we will get keep Boris Johnson out of 10 Downing Street. So they have that by her logic. But they didn't. They weren't able to do either of those things. Similarly, it doesn't matter what they put in their manifest reserved issues. You don't get to act on reserved issues when you're simply an involved administration. You can squeal all you like about squeal all you like about the vote. One thing they got fewer than half of the votes cast. So does that mean that they didn't win on that binary issue because they had up the so the, those who opposed her idea, they actually won. So it's just this this this. It's playing about with statistics and it's convincing absolutely nobody and they just keep repeating the same mantra and it's just meaningless. So they can say it until the cows come home. Yeah. Right Whenever I see someone do that ma that mandate thing, I always post, on Twitter, I always post them a clip uh, from Wings over Scotland, right? Mm -hmm. and, the, and, yep. he say, he, and he says it very clearly. And, uh, if you look through the Twitter feed, you'll, you'll find it in there. But basically he says, look, Johnson also has a mandate. They have a mandate to stop the SNP, yep. mm -hmm. and you've got two, right. if you've got two competing mandates, then you say, "All right, who actually has the power?" And the people who have the power are the, are the UK government because they were yeah. elected, and they have they don't have any reserved powers, so nope. they have an actual mandate to stop that or to keep the UK together or to maintain the UK to stop second referendum. Whereas Sturgeon doesn't have a mandate at all because it's a reserve matter. And this, I think, needs to be made more clear, I think, to these uh, people who keep coming up with this, all these kind of straw-grasping things. I had another person today, claim of right. 
Uh, we're going to use the claim of rights, and we're, Scottish people are sovereign, and uh, the UN is going to come and help us. Look, the UN really doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about Scottish independent, Scottish UK internal issues. Claim the right, you know, it's just so. But they need that hope to keep going. Yeah, and, but they keep um, saying every so often you'll see somebody, a nationalist, will say this: "Oh, Scotland's a sovereign nation. The UK isn't even a country. Scotland's a sovereign nation, really." So who are you representing? of the United Nations in that case. And if Scotland is a sovereign nation, why does it not just declare independence tomorrow? What are they waiting for? Why yeah, do you have exactly. to have a referendum? Yeah, yeah exactly. Why, what are they waiting for? What? They could have had this referendum or pretend you yeah. years ago, whatever it is. But, you know, Absolutely. I think it's... I mean, Sturgeon knows... The, I was talking to someone today about this. It's, is she just, she's just hanging on, you know, until... Yeah. And as long as she can, I guess. Yeah. Why, why would you do that? She should get out before it really starts to... The, Shit starts to hit the fan, as it were, because yeah. pretty soon they're going to come to a hard stop. This this uh, legal advice has has that potential. I don't know if it will do that, but at a certain point, it's going to you, you know, the, the the dreams are going to come up against the reality, and yes. the reality is pretty real in this case. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sarah Jane, for um, for watching and for your comments. Yeah, that's very good. Um, please keep them coming in. Uh, the... Tom Reid, was, was, that, was that question was that question aimed at Scotland's school children? It's more usual that you guys ask questions a lot of thirteen year olds. But thanks anyway, pal. Uh, no, we like uh, we like the crossbreed the uh, people in the chat now. We're getting so much comments. It's, we're getting bigger and bigger. The more comments there, even if it's negative, like Tom Reid is uh, being, we, we like these comments anyway. We like them. Do. Yeah, and uh, Bill Ritchie says okay. hanging on for money and pensions, and I that is, I do believe that that is very true. Coming up, I will be uh, talking with the panel about um, Douglas Ross. Then after that, we were going to have the best part of the week, week of the week, which is always amazing. Mm -hmm. See how that goes. All right, just back in a second. Right, it's no secret that I dislike Douglas Ross. I hear from many people he's a nice guy. I don't care. Um, he has run two woeful election campaigns, uh, least of which has destroyed the grassroots support. Mm -hmm. He's turned every election into a referendum, unnecessarily into a referendum that he then loses, much to the delight of the SNP. The last one he said, vote for us to stop a referendum, and then roundly lost. Of course, the SNP <laughs> were like, yeah, well... Yeah, yeah. We have a referendum now. <laughs> what do you think of his recent that's results, Doug guys? That, that's Douglas for you. Every time he he makes it into a shootout, only the Scottish Conservatives can stop the SNP and prevent a referendum, and then he loses. Brilliant. So that just gives the SNP, who are certain to defeat the the Conservatives under Douglas Ross every time, gives them all the the ammunition they need to say, "You said it, Douglas." Yeah. So yeah. you're the, ones, you're the only one that made it into a shootout. And you lost, so now what? So he just, he, he's simply not capable. He should never have been given the job. He certainly shouldn't be doing it now. It's time for something else. Yeah. Too much. Uh, I mean, well, that's the conclusion, but let's, let's, go, <laughs> let's, go through, let's go through all the points first. Well, I mean, <laughs> personally, um, I used to, I mean, I try my hardest to support Douglas Ross. I really have. Uh, I mean, I'm being completely honest. I, I've tried my hardest, right? Uh, and But I'm really, really, really starting to get disillusioned with Douglas Ross. He can't seem to do anything right at the moment. Just to recap, uh, he put his no confidence letter in about Boris in the 1922 committee, whatever it's called, uh, yeah. to get Boris out after Partygate scandal. And then he invokes the conflict in the Ukraine as an excuse to pull it back, to pull back the letter and flip back for wanting Boris out to backing him. And then, no, he, a couple of weeks later, a couple of weeks later, gents, he's back to wanting Boris out and the letter's back in. I mean, all the while, the UK conflict's still rolling on. on. So what is this guy thinking? He can't invoke the Ukraine and then yeah. it just disregard it. No, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's insane. Crazy. What is this it's, guy thinking? I mean, that's just one thing. I think 
there's I think yeah. there's two camps now of people who dis dislike him. The, the people who think he's a flip flopper who may, who may have been ambivalent about Boris in the beginning and may still be may still well be. And there's the people who are like um, I think many uh, grassroots Tory voters, and uh, I'm not necessarily speaking for them, but I think we have a lot of them as our followers, mm -hmm. and I think for them they see that as a matter of principle, not as a matter of principle for as a matter of principle of unity and loyalty to a party leader. Now that's not to say blind loyalty. That's not the thing. There's a difference between mm -hmm. blind loyalty and um, running to the front of the line and handing out knives to everyone to stab your leader in the back or front. That's a different thing. Yeah. There's ways that these things can be handled. And, and, and I think there's actually more going on in this uh, Douglas Ross performance, because it is a performance, than meet, initially might meet the eye for most people. Um, the, the, you know, I think ultimately, I think a lot of grassroots Tories are like, well, you know, you can't go out to um, voters and say, vote for me because I don't believe in my party leader. And that yeah. just doesn't doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, another point really, I think, is who is he actually, who is he doing this grandstanding to, right? So is he doing it for us to get SNP voters? Well, they're not going to vote for him, right? And is he going to do, no. go for Labour voters? No, they're not interested at all. And if you're Lib Dem, there already are, is a party. Yeah. For Lib Dems. I mean, right? I, I honestly don't even think he knows who he's, he's aiming this at, who he's pandering to. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Who, who, and conceivably, does this appeal to? Yeah, yeah. I think no that's one. The, no one doesn't appeal to anyone. And the thing as well, he's doing that, he's destroying the co his core core yes. vote because they're like, why are you pandering yeah. to this invisible? These, these invisible people by not supporting the party's leader and now you know i was i was thinking i was talking to with someone today and he said well look just contrast him with say alistair jack right alistair jack yeah. comes out straight up mm -hmm. boris got yeah. the vaccine they uh, got us boris got brexit done got the vaccine stopped lockdowns much earlier than sturgeon leading the support in U ukraine now you don't need to dislike boris to know that those are actually all points Important. but instead of actually talking about them for the past few weeks every time someone asks him for a comment he could be saying that all those things yeah. bolstering yeah. his own support and his own leader instead what he's saying is oh yeah i'm really upset because he uh he, he you know he was ambushed for a cake for nine minutes or something like that and you're like why are you wasting this political opportunity all yeah. the time? It's just, a, it drives me nuts. You know, the not only just thing you. I can think, yeah, indeed, it's not just you. The only thing I think is trying to be all things to all men. He's trying to think, right, okay, we've got to differentiate ourselves from the UK Conservative Party because Boris doesn't play well in Scotland, so we we'll do that. So who is he trying to get from that, though? Anyone who votes Conservative will vote Conservative anyway. Whether or not he criticises Boris Johnson, so it can't be. Well, actually, so it's, putting them, it's putting those Tory voters off because they're like, sure. "Why are you not supporting our leader? Why are you not? Why are you not supporting Brexit and the policies of of the Conservative Party? Yeah. Why are you siding with the Nationals? Why are you giving Nationals free headlines all the time? This is not. It's not yeah, good. It's really, you know. It's I true. mean, I say this, I say this many times. He's, they're so scared of being called a branch office that they'll do yeah. anything to appear different, and that's exactly what Nationals want. Exactly. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll be upset. At, um, it doesn't matter who they were going, who the, who the prime minister is. They're going to attack them. They're going to yes. demonise them. They're going to do that. So you just have to stand up for what you've got. Yep. That's you know that's plain common sense. Yep, and try to differentiate yourself from the wider and party. Right. Plays right into the the, the hand of the SNP as well. Absolutely. And there's somebody to the extent somebody said to me today. You know, we we will lose support from the business community if we are seen to be critical of the Conservatives. And I said, well, which ones are you talking about? The Scottish Conservatives or the UK Conservatives? Because they're completely at loggerheads, which is a situation brought about by the Scottish Conservatives. So we can't be anti-both. We're either anti-one or we're anti-the other. And that's a crazy situation that, that Douglas Ross has, has produced under his stewardship. There is this widening chasm between the UK party and the Scottish party, and they're losing votes. They're losing vote share and they're losing seats. They're now firmly in third place behind the Labour party. 
we know that Ross, his, his only way out of this is to keep on talking about independence and how he's going to stop a referendum, how he's going to stop the SNP calling for an independence. We well, stopped talking about independence for one minute. Nobody else is talking about it, just you. He's failed. I mean, he's won two elections. He's fa- that strategy, independence strategy, has failed. Yep. He's against his le- own leader. The grassroots are now against him. It's time for him to go. He's had more flip flops than Air Beach at the Glasgow Fair. <laughs> it's true. It is true. It's, and it's I would say, I'll just spit a final part on this before we go off. I'll trace this back to Ruth Davidson, who's so butthurt about Brexit, yeah. she's leading a st- t- Scottish Tory Remainer revolt, using Ross and the Scottish Tory party to get back at yeah. Boris. That's what I think this is all about. It's not I to do you, with, it's, 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 I think he's being pushed and he's taking bad advice and it all comes back to Brexit. If you can't support Brexit, and this is the thing we say, Brexit kills Scottish independence because it means a hard border. With If they go yeah. independent, it means an absolutely hard border. And it, if even if you don't agree with Brexit, you have to agree with that. So the time the Scottish Tories, who actually are, no, the Tory, who are part of the Tory party that's supposed to be promoting the benefits of Brexit, actually got behind the, behind that story. Yeah, it's well, time for Douglas when, Ross. Well, go ahead. I was going to say, when do you ever hear Douglas Ross or Ruth Davidson, for that matter, saying Brexit has made Scottish independence virtually impossible? They don't say it because yeah. that would be they, they're scared stiff of being seen to be in any way pro Brexit. And that's why, that's, let's not forget, that's why Ruth Davidson left the job. She left the job as Scottish leader the day Boris Johnson was made Prime Minister. So there's a clear disloyalty among the uh, uh, certain elements of the Conservative Party, particularly the Scottish Conservative Party, against the stated will of the UK electorate. And you cannot do that. You can't. Yeah. Are, they, are these guys so um, fervently pro-Remain that they're going to sacrifice Scotland? Just to get the same side as the SNP, you can't do this, guys. That's well, two referendums. 50, Fifty-six of them, however many it is, um, yep. you know, basically to a man. With, with I think one or two exceptions, um, are you know are going along with this ridiculous plan, and they, they're just consigning themselves to oblivion. They have missed out the, the the not apart from the benefits of Brexit, which is should be pushing as their party's yeah. policy, and as we said, it's against independence. It's um, there's a million Brexit Scottish Brexit voters. Mm-hmm. They can be appealing That's to, true. and they've left them completely out in the cold for years. They hate them, absolutely yeah. hate them. Yeah. And as you said, David, True. they'd never say, oh, but Brexit is good. It's always like, oh, it's something bad. And, and, and that's exactly what the nationalists want. They want, they, 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 they want that. Well, I believe, um, and an increasing number of people believe, that Douglas Ross is too weak, ineffective, and disloyal to continue in the job. And he certainly now, once he uh, Boris has survived, then he should definitely stand by his conviction and leave. And let gets let's get someone in. There must be one person, even if it is only one person, who can say, yep. who can actually, you know, um, to be, fight for uh, the for Scott for yeah. fight against nationals effectively. Yes. Please yeah, keep well, your, yeah. go ahead. But what I would say further to that, Mark, even if he doesn't stand down as a Scottish Conservative leader. How in the name of God can he justify continuing to turn up at Westminster, which he still does, yeah, even exactly. though he doesn't take a salary for it allegedly? But how how can he do that in all conscience when he's admitted openly that he has no trust in his own party leader? I, I don't know how he can possibly show his face there, really. So Ross has got some. He's going to make a decision soon, or he's going to have zero legitimacy, zero credibility, which is already oh, mm-hmm. if credibility is down the toilet. I want you to say yeah. something though. Some people say, "Look, we want." Um, because we don't like Douglas Ross and we might like Boris, whatever it is, that means that we uh, are a bunch of Tories. We are a cross-party group and we want the strongest leadership in Scotland against the nationalists. And whether that's Labour, Lib Dem or whatever, and this type of uh, division and infighting like this is harmful and it's shown in the election result, recent election results. We are right on this issue. They need to sort themselves out and um, Quite move right. on, get over Brexit, move on, get people, it's, you know, time to, it's time for them to move on so that we can all move on. Moving on, I we're talking about moving on, <laughs> we are on to the Zoomer of the Week's is coming. Here it comes. Well, 
Right, David, you're up first. First up, okay. So I'm back to more um, familiar ground now in nominating uh, SNP representatives. So this week, uh, my nomination goes to SNP Member of Parliament, Philippa Whitford. This very week, Ms Whitford repeated the entirely false and previously debunked SNP claim that Scottish taxpayers will somehow help to fund HS2, which is the new high-speed railway linking London with the north of England. Now, this false claim was made after plans this week were revealed uh, to have been scrapped, and those plans were to link the railway with the new railway with the existing West Coast Main Line, which would conceivably have allowed faster trains to come to Scotland. And as a result of this, Mrs Whitford claimed Scots taxpayers would stump up as she put it for HS2, but would receive no benefit from it. Now, this is a claim which has been many times, it has been disproven previously, both by independent financial groups and, in fact, in a Scottish Government Freedom of Information request. The reality is that Scots taxes, any Scots taxes which are used to fund HS2, will be returned with interest, with additions, via the Barnet Consequentials. And it's estimated this will, in fact, result in a benefit of up to £10 billion to Scots taxpayers arising from this. So what gets me, again, it's going back to the fact that you've got SNP, MPs and MSP, who routinely spread blatant disprovable lies in their yeah. efforts to try to drum up support for independence. Now, this just tells me that there is clearly no economic case for Scotland leaving, leaving the UK, because if there was, they'd make it. Instead, they, ha they rehash these lies, which have been disproved by their own government. So it, 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 it's just yet more and yet further example of the SNP making up, grabbing onto any passing thought to say, oh yes, that's a, that's another independence also. Nonsense. So this proven already, clearly just rehab light, quite disgraceful. So my nomination in the Zoom of the week, Philippa Whitford. Well, I guess that's another one of those nationalism is big things, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Yep. You know, it's, you know, we'd like to go on about this, but you know, the whole idea is that, oh, we're not getting our fair share. You know, it's our oil yes. and people are stealing our wind and water and TV commentators are you know, calling us British instead of Scotty, all this kind of minor, minor, low-level grievance that's just, you know, it's just, it's it's tiresome after a while. You, you're like, you know, oh, HS2, I mean, this has been debunked years ago and mm -hmm. you shouldn't be spreading this. We had one as well, what was it, um, Mike Russell before, he said that uh, Scotland was paying for the UK and it was just it was in the ferret, I think, which the fact finding service. They said no, isn't it? And they were all upset because they, that that ferret thing is generally pro SNP. So, yep. I mean, again, it's this thing. It's the, the, the hard realities of um, life. Real realities yep. coming up and hitting them a bit in the face. Um, this, you know, H I mean, imagine coming out with that. It's really, it's really things. Yeah, Scott will stump up for it. She said. Yeah. Really Rubbish. terrible. Absolutely. Well, it's Rubbish. part of the whole thing, I guess. Um, but you know, you don't see well. Some, you, you do see them still doing that a little bit. And part part of our job is to get rid of all this uh, delusion. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the biggest delusion yeah. of, of, of all, of course, is that there will be a, a second referendum, and we don't see any path to that. Hopefully, as we said earlier, no. that the legal no. advice will help put. If, a nail in it. When the final nail goes in, we don't know, but hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. So, Philippa Whitford. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, we do our next Zimmer of the week. Okay. Right, Niall, you're up. Right, so my Zimmer of the week is our very own Transport Minister, Jenny Gilruth. Uh, so... Hey. She absolutely went off on one this week, and when you see the video, you'll agree, right? Uh, when questioned about the ongoing calamity, that is ScotRail, um, and we'll put the video on, but it's it's the question of accountability that really gets under our skin. Right, and just watch, watch, watch it. The Minister told me that the key, indeed the sole change from nationalisation, was that she would be accountable. So does the Minister recognise the concerns of people who might think that in refusing to step into this situation she's abdicating that accountability. Minister. 
I say to the member, I am accountable. I'm here today answering an urgent question. I was here yesterday answering a topical question on rail. I was here the week before answering a question on rail. And the week before that, he has absolute accountability. Um, minister, for me minister, as minister, the minister, 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 please resume your seat. Jeez, yeah, it goes, it goes, Jeez, so. it goes, yeah, it goes on from there. It's quite a shocker. Yeah, it is a shocker. I mean, I think I, it goes without saying this is childish in the extreme. Yes. People desperately rely on the trains to get back and forth, and it, and it is desperation yeah. times. Jenny is clearly dragging her heels on this issue, and it's right that she's yep. called out for it. Uh, for her then to lash out, it's it's our defence instinct kicking in. Uh, I mean, yep. perhaps it's due to the severe lack of criticism that the SNP parliamentarians have to receive within the ranks of the SNP that's evoked this response. Yeah. But Oops. I, I just don't think she's uh, used to scrutiny at He's all. Stuck. He's it's stuck. as simple as that. Niall seems to be stuck, as does, stuck? Uh, David. So um, we will uh, come back in a second. Not too sure what's going on there. Nope. Okay. Uh, I, I'm still going. Okay, we are All still right. going. So, Sorry. um, uh, okay, where are we? Right, so, uh, okay, I mean, just I a just... second. Mine is, mine is dying. Is it yours? I, carry I think on it's then, guys. Mark that's no, you, I know, yeah, yeah, uh, I right. Mean... So, yes, yeah, so, yeah, it, it was quite, it was quite, um, it was quite an outburst. And I think you're right. I think she's thinking, much like Sturgeon, who, how dare you criticize? How dare you even question yeah. me? Don't you know who I am? I'm in the, I'm in the chamber. I was in the chamber last week, and the week before that, she was saying. Uh, I spoke to them two Fridays ago. Oh, did you? I oh, don't strain yourself, darling. I, 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 I know. I, I mean, even if she, uh, I mean, she's been there last week, the week before, the week before that. I mean, what's happened? Yeah. Nothing. I mean, what, uh, has there been any improvements? <laughs> no. Well, she keeps harking on about this new timetable uh, that, yeah. that brings stability, David. That brings stability Very and certain. assurances. Uh, sure. That well, the only assurance we're getting is that we're not getting home after about eight o'clock. Uh, that's about the only assurance we're going to get. I mean, the, the train situation is, uh, it's approaching, uh, what is it approaching? A dead end, what would you say? You know, the end of the track. Uh, I was just looking for a wee train metaphor there. But uh, I, I think uh, uh, Jenny's um, reaction to this is probably like Wiley Coyote, uh, you know, painting yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the the tunnel on a, on a bridge, uh, on a mountain back somewhere. But it's just... For her outburst, like that, it's, it's just, yeah, where's Douglas Ross giving her the yellow card when you need him? Yeah, you know, right. I mean, there should be a warning for that. You can't just go off on another member like that. Uh, and fair enough to the, well, think, the presiding officer, but she should have acted a bit quicker than that. Absolutely. He's been saying, well, of course, there's nothing to do between us left and so. Yeah, but you own Scott, you know, you just nationalised them. Yeah, but I drive the train, so you might ask me for nothing to do with me. But she's, if they do ever go back to work, she'll be the one saying, yeah. great news, we've missed out. And this just shows the benefit of ScotRail coming into uh, public ownership because the Scottish government has been able to use its influence to bring this conflict to an end. Whereas what the reality is she's done absolutely rock all, as the saying goes. So she's done absolutely nothing and mm -hmm. been quite open and blatant about the fact that she's done nothing. And when she's questioning why she's done nothing, what do you mean? Why are you questioning? You asked my well, question last week. How dare you? I don't drive the trains, David. <laughs> well, accountability isn't just turn, isn't just turning up. Of course, it's not. Right. You know, it's actually you know it's, it's actually doing, doing the job, doing the job. Yeah, I think it's finally getting to. Her. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, that was a um, and, a half. and welcome back, Mark. Yes, I'm back. So back we, we had a little bit of technical issues, as we are want to do it with the new technology all around, and that uh, mm. works. But it's a miracle that we are here, indeed, and in talking to you in the first place. And um, <laughs> thanks to all the people who guess who made this possible. Uh, we will move on to next Zimmer. Right, my Zoom of the week is the Scottish Government itself. Uh, today, wow. just before we come on the show, it was revealed that the Scottish Government didn't look at Ferguson Marine's account before nationalising the yard and apparently still don't have access to them. Here is a clip where they say this, such. This is sh shocking I mean, beyond I think, measure. I mean, we, we, can, we can talk about the progress and we have uh, described the progress being made by the vessels. I don't think anyone was under any illusions at the point of nationalisation that the yard had difficulties 
um, we may want to come back to the degree, that, uh, the due diligence that was possible um, prior to the decision to nationalise the yard, because this was a distressed asset and um, that has some, has some issues. Um, and we couldn't, it is true, I think, undertake the level of technical diligence uh, that we would have wanted until the, um, the yard had gone into administration. So there were some, some challenges around that, and I don't think anybody is under any illusions about that or has pretended otherwise. Did the nationalisation allow you to take over the historic books of FML? That's, we as Scottish Government certainly don't have access to that. I, I don't know what the business has access to. Um, that's, that's a question we can pose to them. Taking over the business, you did not take over the, the actual books of the business? Um, we don't have access to the books of FML, no. It's just it's, it's unbelievable. It's really shocking. I mean, you've got this, you buy a business. I've bought and I've sold my business. And basically what happens when you sell your business is that somebody comes in, or people come in and they do due diligence yep. and they look through every single thing right. and they look and they'll keep and they look and they ask you every question about it. And if you don't have good answers for that, they walk away. That's what happens. And it's really hard. It's hard going because they'll go through everything, every item line by line and all the stuff you might have thought wasn't, well, well, that's just a wee thing down there. That might be the thing that um, puts them off. But they didn't even do any of that. They didn't, they didn't, they, did, they just said, well, well, we have to buy this right now. We have to buy it for, because whatever the reason was, whether it was, you know, we can get a press release out to say we've got, we've saved some jobs or we've got a press release out before, two days before independence vote or something like that to show that we can do things. We're a big grown up administration, you know, we're in the big, the big league now. And, and, but they didn't do any, the actual due diligence. And now what's no. even worse is that even now they still don't have access to yeah. the books. I mean, what's just kind of nonsense is that? Insanity, insanity, Mark. It really is. It's, it's There's no, no other crazy. words to describe it than insanity, financial nope. insanity. You know, it's um, like I'll go and buy this well, business. I won't have a look we, at it, and and then I'll just, yeah. I'll, I'll, I won't care. It goes into administration. It not goes into administration. I'll spend hundreds of millions of pounds extra on it, and I still haven't looked at the books. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. It's a completely crazy. <gasps> Still don't have access to number five. So, I mean, how, how do you agree on the purchase price if you don't look at the books, though? What, how do you value the company? Exactly. You just, you just ask, ask the seller what, what, how much, what, what's the price? Oh, you're a tech manager, McCall. Two hundred and fifty million pounds. It is. Okay. Oh, you're breaking my heart <laughs> here. I mean, what a load of reach. Honestly, this is not. Well, I'm sure Jim McCall is, uh, is not too happy about the political stramash he's been involved in. <laughs> um, he probably thought, "Oh, I can get the money out of this, you know, whatever." Um, but it's caused them much more problems because basically we're talking about people who've got no, absolutely zero business experience whatsoever. Right. right. At all. I mean, you know, has any of them ever sold a business? Has any of them? Hardly any of them have even worked in a business. Yeah. Right. You got a bunch of lawyers, so, has beens, and you know, people out of university and they don't know anything about the real world at all. They if they go into political life, they are they 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 just know politics. They don't know about how how to how to run it run something. Politics isn't running stuff. You know, make some you make some statements exactly. and, and, and you know and you say hope you can get away with stuff, but you know, but that's not what a business is about. A business is about bottom line, employing people, uh, making money Yep. Improving your products all the time, delivering for your customers, all this type of stuff. And just none of them get any idea about that. No. I don't think it ever will absolutely. either. Well, their idea of politics, exactly. Their idea of politics, they're all steeped in the council tradition. So many, we saw this last year at the Hollywood election. The SNP new candidates were straight out of uni or straight out of school into councils, then got a job as a SPAD and then stood for Hollywood. Yeah. Now, that is not representative life you know that the biggest shock you get in your life always from primary school to secondary school to the big school the second one is when you leave school or university and go into paid work that's when you really understand what it is to be a grown-up but these guys have never had that yes. and they're, but their version of politics is is getting scripted questions and reading it from a prepared yeah. Well, I think, uh, to be it. honest, I think I think that's fair enough if you're a local council, a local councillor, sure. local councillor. Yeah, you know, it's like, can you empty the bins? I mean, even that's a hard going for 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 these. I have to say, but we're talking about a a, a political organisation that's pretending, or at least it has an aspiration. Let's put it that way, to run a country, but it can't even run. You know, yeah. this this is an unbelievable fiasco. They can't run the most basic 
uh, thing that, we can, that Scotland is well known for. And it, it, even if they were yep, hands off, right. probably they could have yeah. done better than what I they've just, done. I, I think they've just got no sense of what money is worth. Mm, Nothing right. whatsoever. All these people coming right out of university, right into the SNP, right into government, they've got no idea how much uh, it takes to create jobs. Uh, they sort of let, you know, they've no business acumen whatsoever. Uh, nope. They don't know the value of money because they're so used to dishing out other people's money, but not their own. Yeah. So it's. Well, it's there's other people's money. That's the thing about it, you know. Yes. I mean, I'm not going to go all libertarian and say all taxation is theft, but you have to remember that the tax comes from people. Yes, uh, people you are. Yes, right. spend their time earning money, and then that money is used to finance these things. And you have to have right. a sense of responsibility. You're going to use people's taxes in the most prudent manner possible. And that's, uh, I mean, you think Scotland would be known for financial prudence, perhaps, and this is not. This government is certainly disabusing us of that notion. All right, I'm aware we have to move on. Um, okay, now you can give it a go. Well, the, the end of the week. You can choose. Uh, right, can I'll choose. choose. I, I'm going to choose the entire Scottish government, Mark. No. Uh, well, well done. Said. You've made the case the entire Scottish government is not fit for purpose. It does not deserve to be there. The people don't deserve to be there. They're ruining Scotland. It's the the Scottish government are the Zoomers of the week, guys. <laughs> right. The full thoroughly deserved. Yeah, so it's just short. I mean, you just it's just one thing after another. And hopefully the Scottish people will wake up at some point and see the disaster around them. It's not good enough to be kings and queens of the ashes. We actually want to have a functioning com- country. Yeah. You know, uh, just, and uh, we'll uh, look uh, around and say, quite right. mixing uh, metaphors a little bit, that the emperor does yeah. actually have no clothes and um, let's, we need to move on. All right. Okay. So just a reminder to all you viewers out there, uh, thank you for sticking with us uh, through this hour. We have enjoyed your comments. Uh, that We will be back next Wednesday. Yes, uh, not Wednesday. Thursday, Wednesday. Remember that. But we'll be on social media, yeah. NFC. And if you miss it, you can get it and catch Watch up it. anyway. Always we say thank you to Mary, um, but she is not able to, able to shoot me on the screen today. Um, but she's doing great work with the comments. Uh, thank you to donors, of course. And thank you to UK Union Voice, United Against Separation, for helping us distribute the podcast. Uh, I was going to leave you with a thought for the week, but um, I just realised I didn't write that bit in. <laughs> so I think... Um, We'll just continue last week's one again, which is nationalism is greed. And always when you're looking out for something, when someone says something like Philip Philip or Whitford um, about HS2, what is their motivation yep. for saying that? That's the thing you have to look mm-hmm. at. Well, it's selfishness, greed. These are the foundational principles of nationalism. Yeah. So with that, we'll leave you and we'll see you again next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Goodbye from me. Yes. Yeah, I may uh... not be with you next Bring the guys to have a little appointment elsewhere in spirit, if not. Buddy. Yep, and it's good night for me. Have a great evening, everyone. Yep. Okay, thank you all for yeah, watching. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.